Hey everyone, how's it going? So today we are going to be playing with my KS0 Pro some more. Um, it's currently running the 280 Giga Hash T Swift firmware on there, pulling 151 watts. If we come on over to T Swift's new free software, we can see all 12 chips and they're running about 47 to 51 C. Uh, voltage is 4.3, 4, sorry, 0 0.43, 0 0.42. Volt. We got plenty of headroom. Temperature is great on the chips. The board temperature in is 31C. The board temperature out is 78C. I want to try the 340 Giga Hash firmware, but before we do that, we need to fix this. And I have an idea. So let me go ahead and pull this apart right now so I can show you my idea on how to fix those outgoing temperatures. Okay, so I got the whole thing torn down, cleaned off all the thermal paste on the other side, cleaned off the pad residue and everything. You can see my solder job up here for the external fan controller for the cross flow going right through it. And if we flip this over a little bit, you can see the four little heat sinks that go on the power stage MOSFETs to keep them from overheating. Without this, the 280 giga hash, no matter how much air you flow through this thing, they would just overheat. So that keeps them within tolerance, barely. If we flip this over, we can see three, 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 and three. So 12 total ASIC chips on the KS0 Pro. Plus all these little silver things here. These are soldered on heat spreaders. They're not heat sinks, but they do help spread the heat around to try to help dissipate it a little bit. It's kind of a cop out instead of actually just correctly heat sinking the whole board. And that's the problem we're running into right now. It's not so much that the chips can't cool themselves enough. We need to get more cooling around this whole area right here for the power stage to make sure it doesn't overheat and to bring this temperature down. So my ideas are is to use these. These are little five millimeter high heat sinks and we are going to attach them onto here to help give it more surface area for the cross flow to dissipate more of the heat. And we're gonna stick them on the same way I did with the other copper heat sinks. This is a thermally conductive adhesive tape. So we have to watch out for a few components. Like we have these um, R050 resistors. These are current uh, sense resistors. We gotta watch out for those cause if you can see it's tapping right there. We don't wanna go over top of it cause even though putting the tape over it should seal it in. These are not electrically conductive, it's just thermally conductive. We don't want a gap. So let me see, I got 10 of these total. Uh, I might put some on the opposite side as well, just to hopefully suck out a little bit more heat. I'll be back in a minute when I figure out exactly which way I wanna lay out these little heat sinks. Okay, so I got the heat sinks all placed on the bottom and the top, I'll show you in a second. Uh, three on the bottom here, not contacting any of the surface mount components. Now, if you have a dead stock KS0 Pro without any cross flow, I would not recommend this because it blocks these cross flow vents that you normally see going through the PCB itself. That comes from the 40 millimeter fans. Since we do have a lot of cross flow uh, air coming from the external fan that we installed on the side, this is not an issue anymore. So let's flip it over. And I also placed three on the other side too. Now granted, these aren't gonna conduct nearly as much heat because there is a large copper fill here, but it's covered by green solder mask. It will still suck some heat out. Any little bit will help in this situation. So I decided to go ahead and place three on this side as well. Let me go ahead and repaste all 12 of these chips, put it back together and get some new pads because yeah, the pads are very good but they didn't hold up very well. So give you a few minutes, we'll put this back together and get it powered back on and see what it does. So here you go, fully assembled. You can see the heat sinks on the side and you can see why we only needed five millimeter height heat sinks because it just barely clears on this side. And this is the side that we really need to cool. This has the uh, heat spreaders on it. There's a ton of space over here, but you also have the 40 millimeter fans and honestly, Putting a bigger, thicker heat sink on this side with the solder mask um, is probably not going to gain you much at all. This is the side that really needs to be cooled. So let's go ahead, put the external fan back on and power it back up. 
Okay, so once again, we are up and running about 150 watts. You can see the little blue heat sinks in there. And if we come on over to the screen, we can see all the chips are running uh, anywhere between 44 and 51 C. Voltage is still between 0.42 and 0.43. Uh, input and output. Unfortunately, this did not have the desired result that I was hoping for. Board temp in is 31 C. Board temp out is 76. It's within 1 C of where it was originally. So, in theory, it didn't do anything to it. But, depending upon where they put that little resistor, the thermistor that reads that temperature... And actually, it just went to zero. What the heck? <laughs> I don't know why it went to zero. Oh, there we go. Now it just came back. <laughs> that was weird. Um, either which way, they may have put this thermistor in an area of the board away from the MOSFET power stages. So it may not matter. It may still work. So let's go for broke and install the 340 giga hash firmware and see what happens okay so i tried the 340 giga hash low power version and the regular uh the low power is always crashed out on my ks0 pro so i wasn't expecting that much from it i tried the regular and it ran for about two minutes and then crashed out thank god for his free software because it actually shows me what's going on here chip number one the temperature was okay the voltage was okay but the clock was so low, it just crashed it all out. Basically, chip one on my board just can't handle the overclock for 340 giga hash. So let's try 320 and see if I get lucky there. Oh my God, 329 giga hash. It's actually working. Um, <laughs> massive update after 12 hours from the last time recording. This fan shroud, because I talked to T-Swift, was the main issue here. This goes on the side which has the Ethernet and the USB. Well, apparently the airflow doesn't go this way. It's supposed to go this way. So T-Swift was nice enough to give me an STL 3D print file for this fan shroud that fits over the whole unit itself, has a pass-through for your power, and pulls the whole unit the correct direction. I have this fan ramped up a lot more, but I could ramp it up a little bit more. The board temp output is 69C. I still could not run the 340 giga hash um, firmware, but this is running on the 320, and I'm actually getting 329. The temperature on all the chips is fine. The voltages are perfectly fine, and it is hashing away at 191 watts. So the big issue here that I was having is the MOSFET power stages just kept overheating. They're probably pretty still freaking hot in there, but it's enough that it won't shut itself down. So there you go. I will leave links for the monitoring software, the free monitoring software, the STL. I will find a link, put this somewhere so this way everyone can download it. Maybe I'll throw it on the Thingiverse with a uh, credit to T-Swift because I did not design this, he did. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video. You know quantum computers. You know blockchain. But do you know both together? Dynex was the first platform to create a neuromorphic supercomputing blockchain-based algorithm which solves real-world problems. And the best part? Anyone can post a job. Whether a company from the Global 2000, a machine learning job, or fintech and pharmaceutical. And if you don't want to program it yourself, get an expert directly at the marketplace. Run the job and be impressed by the fast result.